Okay, so I have this here BFB 3000. It's uh, under plastic because there's a an exhaust fan sucking the fumes away. Because you know, I'm using some extra cheap plastic, which smells a little bit more than the normal stuff. It's not too bad, but still, I'm sucking it out. But anyway, one of the problems with the sucker fan is it it sucks air through and keeps everything cool in there, which is, is not preferable because already there's no heated print bed in there. So when you're printing things, they warp. Sort of like, this one isn't too bad, but it's still unusable. See, it looks okay over here, but over here, see, it, it bent up, and when it does that, it starts mashing against the nozzle and making a bad job of the print. Anyway, this piece is totally garbage. Ugh, such a waste. Um, <clears throat> now, I could just print everything out of PLA instead of ABS, because the PLA doesn't warp. Uh, it might warp a little bit, but not very much. Well, there's two reasons I go with the ABS instead of the PLA for what I'm doing right now. I'm printing out a big robot, and there's all these precision parts that are going to be under lots of stress, and they'll be moving around and creating heat, and I don't want them to melt, and the ABS has a much higher melting temperature than the PLA. The other reason, and this is super annoying because I'm having a problem right now, is that the ABS is much more ductile. You can bend it. And the PLA here is very brittle. And when it's going through the machine, see when you print the, the parts out, it, it's, it's okay. They come out real strong and everything. Blah, blah. But, all right, this has to go through the machine, right? And when it's going through the machine, it's often straightened. And when it gets straightened, if it's not warm enough, it just snaps. And right now, uh, inside my silly machine here, um, this is the uh, line for the second nozzle. And you'll notice my PLA is attached, obviously, because in here, it's broken about every two inches, just full of little chunks. And it's really, really a pain to uh, get that stuff out. I have to take the whole pipe out of there and... Ugh. Anyway, it's, a, it's really annoying. But, <clears throat> the other day I decided I was just going to make a heated print bed. Because I was, I was feeling a little bit crazy and frustrated at the time. And I was like, I'm going to fix this. So I was looking around for a heat source to maybe do some tests. And I was thinking, well, I could stick a candle in there just to do, do a couple of quick tests. But then I, I noticed I have a soldering iron laying around. Oh, I'm getting out of focus. I must be getting too excited and worked up. So this is my soldering iron right here. And it's kind of attached to the bottom of the print bed. Obviously, it's not just stuck there because it would, it would melt holes. The, the heat had to be spread out. So, you know, the soldering iron has a thing like this, right? And this part gets really hot. And that would be too hot, so I got some, some sheet metal. I didn't really have much around, but I did have one of these, you know, the rolls of plastic, and it comes with a metal roll thing. So I ripped that out, flattened it out, and uh, put it on the soldering iron, you know, and just kind of wrapped it around so there was a, a big sheet attached to the soldering iron. And the soldering iron has a, a screw, so uh, I put a hole in the sheet metal and screwed it to, right to the thing. And then I put a few layers of uh, aluminum foil, otherwise known as aluminum foil, whatever you want to say. And <clears throat> because there's a, an air space between the layers of metal, it insulates the heat a little bit from coming straight out. So it has time to spread, spread sideways laterally and kind of spread the, e the heat evenly around the whole thing. So I wrapped, I think, five layers of foil on there. It was enough that I, the heat would spread out so I could put my hand on it without burning it. It's pretty hot though. And uh, there's a little bit of space between the aluminum foil and the bed. Just because, uh, you know, I taped it originally pretty tight. But it sagged a little bit. But it doesn't matter, it's working very well. And if, you stick, if I stick my hand up here, I can feel the bed is warm. And the most important thing, my uh, pieces are coming out totally flat and not warped, and they're really good. 
So I can't say I would recommend, <clears throat> you know, sticking a soldering iron in your machine like that. In fact, I'm totally recommending not doing it. So if you do that and melt a hole in your thing or burn your house down, it's totally not my fault. Don't ever do that! But it, it does work really, really spectacularly well. The machine is like, it's, it's like a new thing now. You know, oh, hit the zoom, sorry. <laughs> anyway, it, it, it's like a new machine now, because yeah, the, the bed in here is pretty big, but before I could only print uh, pretty small things with ABS, which is the superior material to the PLA for anything that you want to be really durable. But now I can just print huge things, so I'm very excited about that. And I'm going to go back to uh, just standing around watching my parts print. It takes hours. Yeah, I'm not really standing around watching them. I have all this, like, toy robot stuff to do. Oh, and just for details, this is uh, just stuck up here with a little bit of tape, you know. Crap. Crappy cheap tape. And here's the uh, view from the side over here. Not the very well. Ah, there we go. Oh, and it's a 30 watt soldering iron. Probably could have gone with a 20. It gets pretty hot in there. But whatever, it works.